Hello and welcome to our next ratio video. Here we're going to use all the techniques we've been talking about so far from substitution and just general intuition and algebra to make sense of this problem which is a little bit tougher. So in this problem we have a ratio of apples to oranges and we're told, and this could of course say anything, but we're told let's say that the ratio of apples to oranges is 5 to 8. And then the question might ask you, well, if we have 65 pieces of fruit in total, right? We have maybe a basket of fruit or something. Um, how many oranges, right? We're going to add oranges. How many oranges do we need to add to make our ratio not 5 to 8, but how many do we have to add to make it a 1 to 2 ratio? And this kind of is kind of a classic ratio question. So we're going to look at this, I think, uh, intuitively, of course, but then we're going to look at some algebra techniques to break this down. And I think you'll, you'll feel a lot better about this type of problem. So the first thing I, I look at here, of course, is the ratio itself. If the ratio is 5 to 8, that's telling me there are 5 apples and 8 oranges, or 13 pieces of fruit in that ratio. So that ratio tells me, right, because 5 plus 8 is 13, that out of every 13 pieces of fruit, 5 of them are apples and 8 of them are oranges. So if I look at the total pieces of fruit in terms of these groups, I can kind of get a sense of what's happening. Right? I want to know how many groups of 13 there really are in this bucket. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, 65 divided by 13 will tell me how many groups of 13 there are in 65. 65 divided by 13 is just 5, right? Because 5 times 13 is 65. So there are five groups of this ratio in our bucket, right? If we think of the bucket of fruit, right? There's a bunch of pieces in here, right? 65 in total. In that total, we're saying there are one, two, three, four, five groups where each group has a ratio of five to eight. So now to count all the fruit up to figure out how many apples and oranges there are, right? So before we really want to think about the change in the ratio, we should I think it makes sense to look at how many of each type of fruit we really have. We can do simple multiplication, right? Because each group has five apples. So five groups of five apples is five times five, or 25 apples, right? And since there are five groups of, of oranges, and each group, of, each group has eight oranges, there's five times eight oranges, or 40 oranges right? So there's 40 oranges and 25 apples in total. So now we can look at this in a little bit, I think, more intuitive of, right, of a way here. We can add these two up, 25, right, plus 40. That means there are 65 pieces of fruit altogether. And our ratio is now 25, oops, 25 to 40. This is really, I think, the ratio, if you look at all the fruit in the, in the basket. So we want this ratio to be 1 to 2. So really, you can think of this as 1, and then this number right here should be double that. Now, it's not double, right? What is double of 25? Well, the ratio, if it were 1 to 2, would be 25 right, to 50. And that's the ratio we want. It's 1 to 2, right? 1 to 2 means that this number right here is half of this number right here. It's a one to two ratio. So how many pieces of, or how many oranges do we need to add? Well, we have 40, we need 50. So the answer to this question is we have to add, right, 10 oranges. And that will make the total ratio one to two. And of course, it changes the number of fruit in the basket, right, because we're adding oranges. So that's the kind of the intuitive process here, right? We have to add 10 oranges and we'll have that one to two ratio. But how do we deal with this algebraically, right? What do we do? Well, we're looking at the ratio of apples to oranges, right? And the ratio of apples to oranges is just 5 to 8. That's what we have right now, apples and oranges. But we, we want this ratio to be a, a ratio of 1 to 2. So the question really is, right, if our ratio should equal 1 to 2, Right? 
how many oranges do we have to add? I'll use um, OR for orange, so we don't think it's zero. How many oranges do we have to add to make this ratio here equal to one to two? So we, basically here, what we do is we're solving for oranges. So let's, let's, let's use some algebra techniques. We're gonna cross multiply here, right? That means we're gonna multiply this denominator by this up here, and that's just eight plus oranges, because it's multiplying by one, nothing changes. And then two times five is 10. Okay, well, now we solve for the number of oranges here by subtracting eight on both sides. And what does that mean? Well, eight minus eight, zero, and the oranges equal two. So it looks like here, you know, that we need to add two oranges, but what we did in this, in this setup right here, we looked at the original five to eight ratio. So what we were saying is, and this makes sense if you think about it, we wanted to add two to eight, and that would give us five to 10, right? So our original ratio would be one to two. But how do we relate this to the context of the problem here? Well, remember, you know, one of the first things we did here is to figure out uh, how this five to eight ratio, right, relates to all the pieces of fruit that we have. And we said that five groups of five to eight fit within the 65 pieces of fruit in the basket. So we don't want right, to, we, we want to actually change the number of total fruit in the basket. So we're still going to scale this whole thing up, right, multiply it by five. And then we get 25 over 50, right? So here you can look at it algebraically and say, oh, well now there's 50 pieces of fruit here, there's 50 oranges, and before we would have only had 40, right? Scale this up and we get 25 over 40. So we'd have to add not two oranges, but 10, right? So this, this algebraic approach still requires us to kind of use some intuition. And in fact, I guess you'll never really find an algebraic problem that you can truly understand without any intuition. So I, I, you might not like that way though. Let me give you another way of looking at it. Um, so you might always start with this first technique of, or first step, right? Um, down here, sorry. Looking at how many groups of your ratio fit in the total, and that was five. So the first thing you could do, instead of setting up this way, is to scale up your ratio. So instead of five to eight, it would be, right, 25, to 40. And then the goal is how many oranges do you have to add to that? And this time let's put an O. That's orange, not zero. How many oranges do you have to add to, to, to this in the bottom here in order to get a ratio of 1 to 2? Right? We're saying what do you have to do to this here to make it equal 1 to 2? And to solve, we're just going to cross multiply, right? Multiply these across. And we get 40 plus some amount of oranges. That's just these two multiplied right here, equals 2 times 25, or 50. And now, when we solve for oranges and subtract 40 on both sides, right, here you'll see that the orange is now equal 10, which is our answer. And that might, this might be, you know, this is a little bit nicer than the other algebraic approach. But we can still reason our way through it. So my suggestion is, with a problem like this, where you're given a ratio, you don't have to add something to make a new ratio, Think about, you know, the ratio they give you. Think about how many times it fits into the total, but dividing, right? Rescale this ratio up to that new total, which is 25 over 40, and then set up some kind of proportion like this. Now, this is going to be difficult at first, but soon you'll see that, you know, this, this step right here, for a lot of problems, will really enable you to, to provide an answer when things are even much more difficult than this. Right, this technique right here, where you're just solving for the amount of oranges, is a nice way of coming to an answer. So in the next video, we'll look at an even tougher problem, and I think that'll give you some real insight into algebra and ratios. Thanks a lot.